In this video, I want to explain the electronics of solar panel shading and solar panel hotspots. In this picture, we have a typical solar panel with a lot of individual cells that are connected in series. We have a plus terminal, a minus terminal, and a load resistor across the panel that I call RL. And let's say that each solar cell in this panel is receiving very bright sunlight. So we have a current flowing from plus to minus through this load resistor in this direction. Now I'm going to use the convention of positive current. The electrons actually flow the opposite direction, but it doesn't really matter. Everything works just the same. So a very interesting thing can happen in this solar panel. For example, let's say that a leaf falls on this particular solar cell right here. And let's exaggerate a little bit and say that this leaf blocks all the light from this particular solar cell. A very interesting thing happens. Since all these solar cells are connected in series, the whole circuit can shut down if the panel is not designed properly. And the current flowing through this load resistor stops. And a very interesting thing now happens that these solar cells that are being lit can dump their energy into this shaded solar cell. And what can happen is that this shaded cell can heat up because it's receiving a lot of energy now and it can actually be destroyed. Again, that's if the solar panel is not correctly designed if it doesn't have enough bypass diodes and we'll explain that a little later. So let's understand this interesting phenomenon and why that happens and the electronics of this phenomenon. Let's start by reviewing some very simple battery resistor circuits. Here I have a half volt battery that's connected across a one ohm resistor and the bottom part of this resistor and battery is tied to ground. Now it turns out that this half volt battery is similar to how a solar cell will operate. It can be thought of as a half a volt battery. Now that's an oversimplification, but as a first order approximation, it's not too bad. So here we're modeling the equivalent of a solar cell with a half volt battery. And here we have two cells in series producing a one volt across the one ohm resistor. So we know that the power is equal to the current times the voltage in this one ohm load resistor. So in this case, we have 0.5 volts across one ohm producing 0.5 amps. So we multiply these together and the power is 0.25 watts. So a quarter watt. Now here, when we have these two batteries in series, the voltage becomes one volt across one ohm, giving us one amp. So if we calculate the power for the two series batteries, we have one amp times one volt or one watt. So we see that adding solar cells in series, two in series can produce four times the power. Instead of a quarter watt, we get a watt. So that's why often solar cells will be added in series to produce a lot of power. So let's review the model for the solar cell. 
Now the model has a current source that feeds current into a, a diode. And here I have the cathode of the diode tied to ground. And the current source feeds into the anode of the diode. So we have current flowing from this current source through this diode in this direction. Now, this assumes that, of course, we have light shining on the solar cell. So the more light we have, the more current we have flowing in this path. Now, if we shut out the light completely, we would have no current flowing in this diode. And we'd be at a point on the current versus voltage curve for the diode right at the origin. Now, as we increase the light shining on the solar cell, we develop voltage. This becomes a little more positive relative to ground. And as the light intensity increases more, we move along this curve. And perhaps at this point, we might have 0.7 volts across this diode. Now, if we could reverse the voltage on this diode and plot the points on this current versus voltage curve, we would get points here. So essentially, the diode is blocking current in this reverse direction. And it's allowing current to flow in what we call the forward condition. But eventually, an interesting thing happens, that the diode undergoes what's called breakdown, we start getting a current flow. We can get a large current flow in this diode in the opposite direction. And since, again, power is current times voltage. So if this diode, in the normal sunlight condition, we have current running this way, it's forward bias. And let's say that it's operating, let's say it's operating at a point here. Now, as we add a load resistor across this solar cell, some of the current flowing in this diode is now diverted into this resistor. So there's less current in this diode. So we move a little bit lower on the diode curve. We have a little less voltage across the diode because we have less current through it. So perhaps this is 0.5 volts with a load. It's going down from 0.7 to 0.5. Now, if we look at the power being dissipated by this diode, again, at this point of operation, the power is current times voltage, which is also the area under this curve here. However, if we can reverse the voltage across this diode, and we can get into this breakdown region, if we can get down here, we can dissipate a lot of power. Because again, if we multiply this voltage times this current, we get this area under this curve, which is a lot bigger. And so we're dissipating a lot of, we can potentially dissipate a lot of power if we can operate the diode in reverse breakdown here. If we can go down here, we have more area under this curve and even more power dissipation. So let's take this solar cell model and connect two solar cells in series. Let's call this terminal ground. And let's put a load resistor across these two series solar cells. And again, this is the curve for the diode characteristic. Now let's say that we're shining bright light on each of these solar cells. So let's say for sake of argument that the voltage here is 0.5 volts because this 
this particular diode we'll say is operating over here and it's about say 0.5 volts and this diode up here it also has 0.5 volts forward drop across it because it's receiving the same amount of sunlight so if we look here we have one volt across this load resistor so we have a a current flowing in this direction where this is plus minus minus plus so the so going in this direction we add up the voltages across each solar cell now what happens if we turn off this light on this particular solar cell we're going to shade it completely and what happens is that this current becomes zero so we have no current flowing in this branch but this solar cell is receiving a lot of light and it has let me get my pen here it has current flowing in this loop here but because this current source has shut down because it's shaded the current flowing through this load resistor becomes essentially zero and so if we analyze the voltages in this circuit we have zero volts here and we have no current flowing through this load resistor so there's no voltage drop across it so instead of having one volts we have zero volts at this particular node but we have light shining on this particular solar cell and it's, it's generating current flowing through this forward diode and causing us to operate on this diode curve here and so it there's a voltage plus to minus across this diode and so if we look at the voltage at this particular point in the circuit we start at ground it stays at ground zero volts but then it becomes negative going from plus to minus across this diode so we have minus 0.5 volts so we have a minus a half a volt so this diode here is actually operating in the reverse bias condition it's operating at a point here now if we add more cells in series let me do some erasing here and let's presume that each solar cell adds a little bit more voltage here in fact let me erase that let me every time we add a series cell we add a little more voltage in the circuit now if we add enough series solar cells we can produce a very large voltage for every solar cell if we say we have half of volts if we have enough solar cells we produce a large voltage plus to minus and so since this diode is shut down and we're not running any current in our load resistor we can say that this is zero volts going to this node minus a half a volt minus one volt minus a volt and a half and if we add more series cells eventually this voltage here can become very negative as, as we add more cells we move along this curve let me change colors here we move here adding more cells in series eventually we reach this breakdown region and when we do that we start getting current to flow in a reverse direction through this diode so the current flows through this diode and around the loop through the resistor and back to the cathode of this diode this is the anode cathode 
So the current flows the same direction through the resistor, but by adding enough series cells, we reach the breakdown voltage of this diode. We operate at a point here, and again, if we calculate the power being dissipated by this one shaded cell, is the area here which can be quite significant. And that can even destroy this particular solar cell, again, if the panel is not designed properly. So how do we design a panel where the shaded cell does not get destroyed? Okay, let's consider that. Let's say that we have a lot of series diodes. Let's say this is ground. We have our current sources. And we have our load resistor out here. Now, if, if these solar cells are receiving light, and this one is not, then we're generating currents in each of these current sources. But since this solar cell is shut down, we don't generate any current in our, in our load resistor. And so, again, we develop a reverse voltage across this bottom diode that could destroy it. But So how do we fix that? Well, one way is to add a bypass diode. And we can add a diode connected like this. And what that does is in the normal circuit operation, this diode doesn't do anything. It's reverse bias. And we may have another bypass diode up here. Let's put a simplify it. We'll put a bypass diode on every solar cell. I mean, typically that wouldn't be done because these diodes are expensive and it's not really necessary to, to put a diode across every single solar cell. But to illustrate the point, if we try to reverse bias this diode, it can't happen because this diode here will become forward bias and it will protect this shaded solar cell from being in the, in the diode zener region and dissipating a lot of power. A, a small amount of power will end up in this forward bias diode here, and this diode here cannot become reverse bias. I'm in my circuit simulator now, and I'm modeling two series solar cells. So here's a cell is tied to ground in series with another cell. And this output node is feeding into a 100 ohm load resistor. So let's run a simulation of this. And this is a case where I have sunlight shining on both solar cells. So this current source I've set at 0.1 amp and this current source I've also set at 0.1 amp. So they're receiving equal amounts of light and generating a current through this load resistor. So let's run a simulation on this and look at some of the node voltages. So let's select Run. And let's probe this particular node. And it looks like it's a little more than, it's around 769 millivolts, so about 0.7 something volts. And let's probe this node up here. And it's about, 1.52 volts, about twice the voltage of the other node. So it's working as two solar cells in series, like two batteries. You can think of this as one battery in series with another battery driving this 100 ohm load resistor. So let's see what happens if, let me get rid of this top waveform, let me expand this. What happens if we shade this bottom solar cell. 
and let's set this current source to zero. So it's completely shaded. Now let's rerun our simulation and look at the voltages now. So let me probe this node. And we see that it's reading minus 774 millivolts, or about minus 0.7 volts. Let's probe this top node. And it's reading 0 volts. So that tells us that we have no current flowing in this 100 ohm resistor because this is 0 volts here, this is 0 volts here. And at the connection between the two solar cells, we have minus voltage. So this diode D1 is reverse bias, and diode D2 is forward bias. Call RL. Okay. Let's say that each solar cell in this panel is receiving very bright sunlight. So we have a current flowing from plus to minus through this load resistor in this direction. Now I'm going to use the convention of positive current. The electrons actually flow the opposite direction, but it doesn't really matter. Everything works just the same. And it can actually be destroyed. Again, that's if the solar panel is not correctly designed, if it doesn't have enough bypass diodes, and we'll explain that a little later. So let's understand this interesting phenomenon and why that happens and the electronics of this phenomenon. Let's start by reviewing some very simple battery In this video, I want to explain the electronics of solar panel shading and solar panel hotspots. In this picture, we have a typical solar panel with a lot of individual cells that are connected in series. We have a plus terminal, a minus terminal, and a load resistor across the panel. And I, the whole circuit can shut down if the panel is not designed properly and the current flowing through this load resistor stops. And a very interesting thing now happens that these solar cells that are being lit can dump their energy into this shaded solar cell. And what can happen is that this shaded cell can heat up because it's receiving a lot of energy now. So a very interesting thing can happen in this solar panel. For example, let's say that a leaf falls on this particular solar cell right here. And let's exaggerate a little bit and say that this leaf blocks all the light from this particular solar cell a very interesting thing happens. Since all these solar cells are connected in series, 